Hi, and welcome to Discover Oklahoma. I'm Lauren Nelson. And I'm Dean O'Lally. Today we're coming to you from Lake Thunderbird State Park. This is the site of one of over 12 annual events called the First Day Hikes. Photojournalist Chris Cook went on the hike last year. He was right here at Lake Thunderbird, but you can enjoy a first day hike at any one of our state parks. Uh, we're having our annual first day hike. We do this, this is probably the fifth or sixth, seventh annual. All the state parks try to have that first day hike. First day hikes are a nationwide state park initiative. They started in Massachusetts and they have since spread throughout all 50 states. And the idea is on the first day of the year to start on the right foot, literally. So get out, one, in nature, and two, exercising, three, hopefully being with people you enjoy. We try to get the community together to, uh, you know, start the new year out right. If you're going with me, we're going to go cross country. We're going to go approximately three miles, all right? We're going to go out through the woods, and then we're going to hit the road, and we'll bring the road back. There's going to be elevation changes, not straight up, not straight down, but it's going to go up and down a bit. So. We'll have some elevation changes. Exercising and, and getting out and seeing nature and stuff. Just getting out and visiting and uh, seeing new parks in the state, you know, because we're trying to promote it all over the state. So why did you decide to come out here today? Because we want to get ourselves back outside again. Yeah? We used to do a lot of geocaching. We haven't done it in a while and I got out of shape, so. Are you having fun? Yes, I'm having a blast. Yeah. It's our first time. So starting out your new year by hiking, is something that our visitors have found really rewarding. We have seen a huge upturn in number of visitors year after year, and sometimes you can hit multiple parks in the day. So different parks host their events at different times. Some parks even do it right at midnight. We've got trails that uh, we can put older folks on, and we've got trails that that's more for the more advanced, you know. If you're handicapped and can't walk a long ways, we've got a handicapped trail over here we're going to split you off into. Well, Ernie's going to talk about different habitat of, of wildlife habitat, basically. Some of the uh, geological part of the lake, he'll be talking about the trees, uh, you know, identifying the different tree species through the field and everything. Kind of showing wildlife sign as we're going through. Don't look up there for eagles. Look for an eagle only 300 feet or less above the surface of the water. When they dive, they dive at 99 miles an hour. Because we need to be out and having fun in nature, so. And this is a great lake. This is a wonderful lake. Did you have fun? It was wonderful fun. It was a blast. A lot of fun. What was fun about it? Well, just starting the new year off out in the, the, the nature and just getting fresh air and not being stuck at home and learning some stuff out here and experiencing new parts of Oklahoma. And it's great to be, have this kind of nature and this kind of experience so close to a big metro area. How was it? It was good. Nice day today. You bet, come out and see us. If you wanna plan your first day hike, download our State Parks app or hit up the State Parks page at travelok.com. You can also find events on most of the State Park Facebook pages. You know, a good hike will get your blood pumping and your heart rate up. But this next story might get your heart to skip a beat. Deanne Stein takes us to the Stilly Axe Pit in Stillwater. If you're looking for something a little edgy to do in downtown Stillwater, step into Stilly Axe Pit. That are a little apprehensive and they're a little scared. Even though it may be a bit out of your comfort zone, Brettley Florence promises the activity is right on point for a good time. You've got to be calm and patient being able to take your arm and do that. <laughs> it's as long as you listen to your coach and um, if you've ever thrown anything then you'll be fine. Brettley is the manager and one of two coaches here and will walk you through the safety and steps of axe throwing before you even take aim at the target. A lot of times um, people show up and have never thrown anything in their lives by the end of it we'll have them hitting bullseyes with axes, knives, throwing stars and uh, even machetes and saw blades. I love throwing, like I really do. Just sitting there and like seeing how powerful you can get the throw and making that bullseye or even a kill shot, I've done that before, like it's just, it feels good. With 12 lanes of throwing targets, the facility is perfect for private parties and even league nights for those wanting to compete on the world stage. It isn't a mainstream sport, but it's something that people have enough interest in that they're really flocking to it. I mean, since 2015 or 16, 
it went from you know 5,000 throwers in the World League to now there's 23,000. That's a huge growth. After watching for a while, I decided I wanted to give it a try. I don't even like to use knives in the kitchen, so, so I'm a little nervous here, okay. so kind of run me through of, of how this goes. So you're right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed. All right, so you're going to take your left hand, place right at the bottom hand. of the axe. Okay. Right hand at the top. You want to have your left foot forward and your right foot back. You're going to press your knuckles toward the target like you're punching it. Okay. Bring the axe straight back up over your head. The motion's like you're chopping something in front of you. So straight up, straight down. You want the motion to be smooth all the way through it. When you get at eye level, you're going to let go. When you let go, don't flick the axe. Just simply open your hands and follow through. Okay. So you're ready to give it a shot? Uh, okay. All right. We'll try it. Moment of truth here. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, I'm nervous. Well, I couldn't end it that way, so I tried again. And again. And again. And again. Oh, oh my gosh! It was! It only took six times. No, 10. 20? I don't know. A bullseye is a bullseye, right? Okay. Whew! Finally. Not as easy as these guys make it look, but if I can hit a bullseye, then there's hope for anybody. So definitely come out and give it a try. Discovering Oklahoma in Stillwater, I'm Deanne Stein. The Stilly Axe Pit is located at 1020 South Main Street in Stillwater. They're open Thursday through Sunday in the afternoons and evenings. You can book your time on their website, stillyaxepit.com. Coming up on Discover Oklahoma. It tells the rich and vibrant history of Wewoka, the capital of the Seminole Nation, one of Oklahoma's most historic and oldest cities. Exploring the stories of yesteryear and what we can learn from them. I wanted it to just be a very welcoming and a um, place that would just promote, you know, hospitality and gift giving. Plus the friendly folks at this sweet shop in small town Oklahoma. Everybody calls them mile high. They're about five inches tall and weigh, the German chocolate weighs 12 pounds. And the pie worth the drive. And just wait until you see what else they're serving up a little bit later right here on Discover Oklahoma. The Oklahoma Travel Guide's got a fresh new look. It's your one-stop shop for awe-inspiring attractions, iconic Route 66, stunning escapes, and legendary local food. Get your free copy today. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma, coming to you from Lake Thunderbird State Park, home to one of many first day hikes at our state parks coming up on January 1st. Hiking is one of the many great ways you can explore our state parks. And if it's Native American history you want to explore, we have just the place you need to go. Come along with me now to explore the Seminole Nation Museum in Wewoka. The exhibits and collections in a museum are in reality keys to understanding our past and our future. They help us comprehend how our ancestors adapted to changing worlds. There's much they can teach us on how to live better in the future. That is certainly the case when you visit the Seminole Nation Museum in Wewoka. It was built in 1974 as a partnership between members of the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma and the citizens of Wewoka. It tells the rich and vibrant history of Wewoka, the capital of the Seminole Nation, one of Oklahoma's most historic and oldest cities. The first exhibit you will see is the exhibit we have here on the Seminoles, which we call an everlasting fire. We also have a military exhibit which talks about the servicemen and women who have bravely served their country. Uh, it also talks about the Seminole code talkers who used their language in World War II to help defeat the Germans. We also have an art gallery that hosts a number of exhibits each year. Uh, many exhibits collected from our permanent collection of over 800 pieces of art or often traveling exhibits. The exhibit called An Everlasting Fire Richard mentioned earlier shows the perseverance and determination of the Seminole people. Now to me one of the most interesting artifacts here is a beautiful beaded shield. The shield which is about two and a half feet across was hand beaded for the inauguration of President Johnson back in the 1960s. A husband and wife beaded a shield for each of the five civilized tribes, and the shields were carried in the inaugural parade by the tribal princesses. As far as we know, the Seminole shield is the only of the five tribe shield that has been located. This museum is my history. For many visitors, this museum is personal. They have a family element to which they are connected. My uncle has art 
here, my oldest son, he held the endowed internship position here and had his art hung as well. So it's, you know, it's our history. This museum's important because it talks about human perseverance and it shows how humans can overcome almost any obstacle. Uh, it sends a message that as long as we work together and if we're united, that we can achieve many great and wonderful things. It's, it's one of those places where you can truly learn uh, the history of a place in, in, in such a way that oh, it opens your eyes and broadens your understanding to uh, where we come from as a people, what it's actually transpired here. The people of the Wewoka community and of the Seminole Nation are very proud of the Seminole Nation Museum. So we would encourage people to get out and see Oklahoma and learn about Oklahoma's great history, our diverse cultures, and everything we have to offer. The Seminole Nation Museum is located at 524 South Wewoka Avenue in Wewoka. They're open six days a week, Monday through Saturday, closed on Sunday. This time of the year, you have to follow up a museum trip with a little holiday shopping. And we sure hope you'll make every effort to shop local and support Oklahoma-owned businesses this holiday season, like this next shop, Parafeet Home and Gifts in Chickasha. Elegance, that's the word that comes to mind when you enter Parafeet Home and Gifts in Chickasha. I wanted it to just be somewhere that you could come and find a gift, I mean, for babies, for Brides, we're going to have bridal registry, baby registry, birthdays, um, lots of holiday things. The name Parafeet is unique and it has great meaning to owner Lisa McPherson. Well, Parafeet the name um, is real special to me because it's uh, a little town in Switzerland, tiny little village. It's my ancestors that we're looking for a better life, just like, you know, everyone that immigrated to America, you know, 100 plus years ago, um, they came over and ended up in Chickasha, Oklahoma from Parapeet. The building that houses this beautiful shop was not built long after Lisa's ancestors moved to Chickasha. It was built in like 1917 when Oklahoma was still, you know, on our abstract it actually says Indian Territory. <laughs> Fast forward to today and it's an elegant gift shop. Everything in the store is picked with special care and is something you won't find anywhere else. One of the things I love to do is feature other Chickasha natives and we've got a beautiful line by Taylor Elliott. She's developed a beautiful pen and paper and stationery and just all these fun bright colors. Another line is Mama's Mix. It's a spice mix that one of my best friends Laurie Allen developed and we sell that. Already sold out almost two cases since we opened. You'll find beautiful one-of-a-kind items for your home, too. One of my favorite things we have in the kitchen area is some personalized dishes. There's two different sets. One's called Birch and one's called Lovebirds. And so I can get them personalized for, like, brides or for anniversary. Babies, we've got, you know, swaddles and loveys and pacifier things and just cute outfits. Lots of kids things, lots of puzzles, lots of little doctor kits, vet kits, hairdresser kits, little nail polish that dries and is scented. We carry lots of bath and body perfume, creams, dry body oil, all kinds of neat stuff. If you need something new to wear, you can peruse their clothing corner while you're in the store. I've always loved, you know, fashion and pretty things. For the most part, I'd say they're pretty comfy. They're comfortable, kind of just everyday wear. To find something special and elegant for yourself, your home, or your loved one, visit Parafeet Home and Gifts. I wanted it to just be a very welcoming place that would just promote hospitality and gift giving and, you know, everything like that. You'll find Parafeet Home and Gifts at 117 South 4th Street in Chickasha. They're open Monday through Saturday. Coming up on Discover Oklahoma. Magical. This place is magical. Fun for all ages will show you what they're coloring in Coweta. It's, it's something that I am so tickled about. Someone drive by, you know, from South Tulsa to, to Claremore and buy a thousand restaurants just to come to my little place. Plus, wait until you see why folks are making the drive from all over the state to this hot spot in Claremore when Discover Oklahoma continues. 
Why order a free Oklahoma outdoor guide? Uncover unique wonders. Cultivate your curiosity. And wake up your wild side. Order or download your free copy today. Welcome back to Lake Thunderbird State Park. We hope you'll join fellow Okies for the State Park first day hikes at locations across the state on New Year's Day. This time of year, parents would give just about anything to find something to keep their kids busy. And if they can create something that they think is cool, well, of course, that's just a big bonus. Well, Julie Chen takes us to a place where they can do both, Indigo Tie-Dye in Coweta. Whoever said life isn't all sunshine and rainbows never stepped foot into Indigo Tie-Dye Company. Magical. This place is magical. This rainbow-colored business is as vibrant as its young owner, Shelby Brewster. It's fun, and I get to play with color all day. Shelby started selling tie-dyes when she was 19. I tie-dyed my shirt, my friend's shirts, and then eventually just more people kept asking me to make their shirts, and I just thought, maybe I can make money doing this. From there, Indigo Tie-Dye Company was born. Now you can come and shop the store's selection of custom handmade shirts, sweatshirts, and more. All right, can I go with number eight, please? Of course. Or create your own in this spacious tie-dye studio where walk-ins are welcome. You can come here with no tie-dye experience, um, which is the best thing. The girls here are great. They're knowledgeable. You can walk in and tell them what your idea is, and they can help walk you through the process. And it's a fun process. You'll find everything you need here. Once you decide on an item to dye, then you pick a pattern. There are about a dozen designs to choose from. The classic swirl, a heart, two swirls, a UFO, an alien, a pumpkin, really anything. Shelby folds and rubber bands your piece to ensure perfection. Then you color away with dozens of different shades. If like one person were to come in and make a shirt, they'd probably be here for like 20 minutes. 20 minutes. The long part of tie-dyeing is letting it sit overnight. So they take the item with them. You're also sent home with instructions and special detergent to make sure the results remain brilliant. Not all the fun happens inside. Outside, you'll find several colorful murals. So be ready to smile for a picture by yourself or with some new friends. We've seen like girls in their prom dresses, they come and take pictures it's all the time. There's a new restaurant next door, so there's always people in and out taking photos. Local artists painted the exterior murals and Shelby hopes to add more. You'll also find locally made products here like candles and jewelry. Plus, Indigo Tie-Dye sells take-home kits and hosts special events. You can have your party here or their tie-dye truck can come to you. So like I've been to high schools, we do like a yearbook group or we've done volleyball teams. Next week I'm just going to somebody's house for a birthday party. So you don't have to come here, we can totally come to you. Indigo Tie-Dye Company, a bright spot in our great state. If you need to drive, it is worth it. My words do it no justice, you just need to go and see what it is. And everybody that has come in just loves it and it's just a great place to go. Heck yeah, come and see us. <laughs> In Kawita, I'm Julie Chin, Discovering Oklahoma. Indigo Tie-Dye is located at 204 South Broadway in Kawita. They're open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. You can do a little shopping or book your tie-dye event on their website, indigotiedye.com. Up next on Discover Oklahoma. And I think that uh, that's what makes us really unique is there's so many that that you know take an easy road we've never done that here an oaky work ethic and oh that mile high pie the restaurant that is so worth the drive up next right here on discover oklahoma there are some things you just can't contain oklahoma today magazine is bursting with culture mind-blowing restaurants trips adventures and so much more it's the perfect gift for Mother's Day or Father's Day. Give them something truly special, a year's worth of adventure. For only $14.95, Oklahoma Today Magazine. Break through the ordinary. I have to tell you, we've had a very nice time here at Lake Thunderbird State Park. We sure have, and let me tell you, Oklahoma State Parks are the perfect place to come and hike off those big holiday meals. Absolutely, or just a great dinner from an Oklahoma restaurant. And with that, let's go back to one of my favorites. It's called the Hammond House in Claremore. 
That sign pretty well sums it up, especially if you eat at the Hammett House restaurant in Claremore. They are known for their down-home delicious food, and I'll talk about that in a second. But those pies, honestly, where else can you describe pies by how much they weigh? Number one has always been coconut cream. It, it amazes me, you know, uh, with all the other ones. Uh, the, the ones that were really equally as famous for lemon pecan pie, which is a, like a southern pecan only with a light lemony flavor. German chocolate pie, which is one of the high pies that we do. Uh, everybody calls them mile high. They're about five inches tall. And weigh, the German chocolate weighs 12 pounds. I think peanut butter chocolate chip is probably the most decadent one that we have. It only weighs 13 pounds. These delicious domes of decadence are worth a trip to Claremore, even if you don't like pie. German chocolate and by far the best pie I've ever had. And I don't like pie either, but I like pie from here. <laughs> I am not a big pie person either, but this pie here is amazing. My favorite is probably the coconut cream pie. And there's no way you can eat it. I mean, you'll have two servings. You get the gist about those heavenly pies, but the regular food items they serve here are quite addicting as well. This is the kind of place that has a loyal customer base for a reason, and owner Bill Byard appreciates them all. It's, it's something that I am so tickled about. Someone drive by, you know, from South Tulsa to, to Claremore and buy a thousand restaurants just to come to my little place. Uh, we're not fancy, but I think we do really, really good food. Other items which are big favorites, including yours truly, are their chicken fried steak. Their chili is delicious. Something called skinny soup is very tasty. Their caramelized salmon spinach salad is filling and outrageously good. And the navy bean soup is quite enticing. This is really um, wonderful home cooked, uh, but in a restaurant. And great people make it feel even more at home. I love the navy bean soup because it's the best and I come every, when I, when I can come on a Wednesday, I'll come on a Wednesday. It's, every, it's an every Wednesday thing. So that and the cinnamon rolls are to die for. The Hammond House restaurant has a large menu and given the fact they take pride in making so many of their dishes from scratch, it means a lot of extra work. But Bill says it is more than worth it. Our little motto is as close to home cooking as it gets. And I think that that's one of our keys to success is that we've kept that way from the Hammond family to the Byard family. And uh, that's, that's the way we want to stay. A place that combines good food, service, a clean environment, and tradition is always a win-win for everybody. It really is worth the drive. You should come to Claremore and at least experience the Hammond house one time. You'll come back. The Hammett House is located at 1616 Will Rogers Boulevard in Claremore. They're open Tuesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Sunday, 11 to 4. They also offer curbside pickup. And no matter where your next road trip takes you, the Discover Oklahoma Dining Guide will help you find a great place to eat. All you have to do is just log on to our website, TravelOK.com, to download it or click Request Free Brochures to get your copy in the mail. A huge thank you to the folks here at Lake Thunderbird State Park for hosting us this week. A reminder, you can take part in the first day hikes New Year's Day at many of the state parks across Oklahoma. Be sure to check for times and information on social distancing on the state parks page at TravelOK.com, on the state parks app, or each park's Facebook page. And coming up next Saturday on Discover Oklahoma, hop on a bike and explore. We'll show you where to get a tour on two wheels and some of the best barbecue in the Sooner State. We'll show you where. It's all coming up next week right here on Discover Oklahoma. So until next time, remember, there's always something to discover in Oklahoma. All right, do you know how much money would it take? Polar plunge into Lake Thunderbird. I don't know. I'm thinking six, seven zeros before we even get to the decimal point because <laughs> it's going to be a little chilly. It's going to be real chilly. <laughs>